Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the dahlia plant and what I did is I've just been going around and picking up all these beautiful flowers but they, they seem to be dropping. But this is the dahlia flower and the beautiful thing about the dahlia flower, they come in so many different colours and these are the ones I managed to get. Now look at that beautiful uh, concentric design and all these lovely little petals all oval shaped and look at that it is so beautiful and here I have an orange one which again you get the same design it's a bit battered but you get the idea now the thing is is that I have an orangish here again a bit battered and you get even maroon ones you get red ones I've got some in the garden but they're not flowering at the moment now what I did is that I also planted my dahlia inside a pot which is not a bad idea because I haven't decided where I want to put it but look at those lovely leaves look at that the size of those leaves and here I have about seven stalks from its tuber and they're all growing at the same time. So we'll have to follow that up because in the end, it will be a big dahlia bush. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice, I'm the Red Soil Gardener and today is our dahlia day. As I mentioned, the beautiful thing about dahlias is actually the flower. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and very different patterns. Now the thing is, is that most dahlia flowers, you can get them, this is about two inches, but you can get even larger ones, which go up to about 15 inches. And then you get different varieties. You do get smaller dahlias, which don't grow very tall, but the taller ones can be up to four to five feet tall. So it is a beautiful, dramatic flower that you, if you have it in your garden, the, the drama, if anyone walks in with these beautiful flowers and these lush leaves, this is an ideal plant in your garden. Now, what does a dahlia plant need? Sun, full sun. Full sun will make it bloom, bloom, bloom. What sort of soil does it need? A really good well-draining soil. Now, if you do have a clayish soil, you could always add a bit of grit, sand, um, uh, sandy soil, or just add a bit of compost because what it actually wants is a well-drained soil. Now, the other thing is that with dahlias, water requirement, it is a fast growing plant and it does have tubers. So first thing is that I would water it once a week. Do your finger test. Also have a bit of a dry spell in between water feeds. But at the same time, when you do water it, make sure you're actually watering the root zone as opposed to actually watering the whole plant. Now the other thing about the dahlia is that in warm climates like here in Kenya we take it as a perennial so basically it's there in the soil and we don't have winter seasons but up in the northern hemisphere we do treat it as an annual because once you do get the autumn and winter coming on you have to do your overwinter storage. Now the other thing about dahlias is that although it does like the full sun but in areas where you do have extreme heat is that I would actually recommend that you do plant it where it does keep away from the mid-afternoon sun. So in a shaded area, it'll still do well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the dahlia does have a tuberous root. Now, this is where it's all happening. Now, this area is where all the food production for the dahlia happens. Now, what happens is, is that it's very, very important because before the plant actually shoots up from the eyes, which I'll show you, is that the tuber is actually 
is there to supply the food before it, the plant actually has the leaves to photosynthesize. So what happens is the tuber actually as it's growing is like for example this is my tuber which I have been planting but as I pot it is the tuber will continue growing and making more tubers. So now what you get is here is the tuber and you have the crown. This is the crown of the dahlia, which is this region here, jutting out from the tuber. Now this is where the foliage is actually going to start shooting up. Now how do you recognize an eye? Is that basically is that sometimes it comes in as a pink dot or sometimes if you look here is you see something sprouting like I've got a little baby foliage jutting out. Now that comes from the eye. So now when you see the tuber is that we cannot even compare it to the tuber which let's say a potato for example where on the potato you will have a several eyes where the stalk will shoot out out of the tuber. So what you need for a dahlia is you need to get the mother tuber where you get the babies forming and then the eyes are usually just underneath the crown as opposed to a potato tuber where on the potato you get so many different eyes and so when you do get into a propagation you could actually cut that potato provided and plant it provided you keep it with the eye so it is a totally different type of propagation for the dahlia. And going back again to the tuber is that usually now this big one right here in the center is actually the mother tuber and you can see is that all these little babies are feeding from it. Now what happens is if you are, this is quite a new dahlia but as, as it does mature and grows every year is you find that with the mother tuber is it does crinkle up and it actually has no function after the first year as the plant is actually feeding on the other tubers so sometimes is that when you do want to do a propagation and you do see the mother tuber sort of all crinkled up and basically there's nothing in it is I would actually remove it because it doesn't have a function. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to actually pot it because I did bring it out so I could show you the whole, uh, show you the way the tubers are in relation to the flower. So I'm going to pot it in a pot with its other family member that I had actually opened up. And uh, from there, we'll continue doing, showing you what we do with the propagation of the tubers because I've already started it here. So I have bought this one here. This is the other family member. And I'm going to actually plant this one in here because now that we've seen what the tuber looks like and we've seen where the eye is. So I'm just going to take this here and this is my potting soil as I mentioned to you. This is a really lovely well-drained uh, soil that is full of compost and all those lovely nutrients that um, this plant actually likes. So what I'm going to do is pot it in here in this lovely well-drained soil and in fact why don't I even go down like this. I'm going to try to go down about four inches and I'm going to fill it up. Um, let's put it in here about four inches deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top it up a bit more just so that it really feels secure. I don't want it to tip over. The thing about dahlias also is as they grow is you have to either stake it and I think I will stake these because also they are quite flimsy with the wind. The wind can blow and tip it over so it is a good idea to stake it as it grows taller just make sure it's secure. So I'm just going to take a bit more and then we'll water it. 
we go. Good. And then I'm going to get some water and just top it up. Go into the root zone and don't water it from the leaves upwards because all you need is just a little water on the root zone and it'll be fine. So here I have my dahlia, my baby dahlias that I will grow in here and as it grows I will decide where I'm going to actually plant it in the soil in what area of my garden. Now what happens is in, um, in the northern hemisphere when you do get um, winter is coming is dahlias are not good with frost and because it can actually damage the tuber. Now, just after the first frost, you leave it in the ground and what will happen, you will notice that your dahlia, all the foliage, will turn black. Now, that means it's basically the end of that season. Now, what normally happens is that you can leave it for 10 days in the soil, but before you do that, cut it up to about four inches, leaving about four to six inches of the stem, and then just leave it in the ground. Because they do say that if you do leave the tuber in the ground after the first frost, it actually stimulates the production of the eyes. So I would leave it and then after to 10 days do uproot it give it a good wash and just check that the tuber is not damaged or there's no fungal infection just clean it up and then dry it give it a 24 hour period to dry it and then once you do dry it oh my god i watered it too much once you do dry the tuber what you do is like what we did with the agapanthus the canna lilies you get your carton put your dry tubers in there. You can use this time to either separate and divide your tubers, but either way you either divide them or you put a whole tuber in your carton and then either put vermiculite over it or you could put straw over it or sawdust. Uh, it also depends on what really works for you. So you could put sawdust, you could put peat moss and then just cover it to keep it warm. Keep it in a cool area that is frost free. And by the time the spring comes, you will get your little buds coming out. And that's when you bring it out and you start introducing it into your garden. So here we've planted our dahlia. And then this is what I was in the process of doing. So I was given a lot of dahlia tubers. Now what I want to do with these dahlia tubers is I just decided, because I have about 10 of them, is I decided let me just put it in the soil and water it and keep it in my greenhouse. And then once I do get the sprouting of the stalk, I will decide what I want to do with it. And also what I'd like to do with this uh, dahlia tubers when I do get the stalk is I have seen a stalk propagation and that's what I'd like to do. So we will follow this in another episode and we'll see how to do a propagation using the stalk that pops up from the eye, from your tuber, and we'll see how that propagation works. So I'm taking this tuber and I'm going to put it in the soil here. Now, the way I'm going to plant it, because I can see the eye here, and this is part of a stalk that is sort of, <laughs> it's had its day, but I can see an eye here. So the best way to actually plant it is with the eye jutting out because that's where the stalk will go. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to put it here in the soil and then I'm going to cover it. And I have all these eyes, all these tubers, as you see, they're all pointing upwards and I might just fill it up a bit more again. And the soil is really great because it's so light and once it does start, once the stalks does start jutting up, it'll be very easy for them because it's such a light soil. So that is one method of propagation where you use your tuber, identify the eye 
and what you do you could either divide your tubers or you plant the whole clump and out of that we're waiting for the stalks to go up and then we're going to try to use those stalks and do a, a daily a propagation so this is for another day So now we've understood all this, what we're going to do now is just let's talk about the flower because as we know and what we've always said is that if you want to get more blooms you have to get rid of the spent flowers and spent flowers is a flower that is more or less getting to the end of its cycle and then what happens after that it goes into seed production so what you need to do is when you do do your deadheading getting rid of the spent flower preventing it to go into seed production what you're doing is actually cheating the plant where the plant starts thinking oh dear I'm into survival mode now I need to produce more flowers and that's how you get more blooms so if for example these I've got these ones here if they are old and come to the end of the cycle all I'll just do is pick them and pull them out and what will happen is your plant is going to start generating more blooms so that is a good method now the other thing is that um, to increase its foliage is we've done this before with the colas plant with a lot of other plants is basically is that you just do your pinching now with this plant I would have normally done a pinching if it's about one meter but this looks a bit it is a bit leggy and it is a bit old but what I would do here and we could follow it up is I would this is the top I'm going to just remove it here just like that and what will happen now is I'm going to just throw that and also do the same here just remove it so what we're doing here is by cutting off the tops of the flower of the plant is what will happen is that the plant will automatically start thinking I've got to start making more branches so what will happen is that you will get more branching and you will get a bushier dahlia now the dahlia that I have there in the pot I want to go there and also snip off the heads so that I get more branching so come with me so what I'm doing is I'm going to come in here and here's my lovely dahlia and what I'm going to do is, again, I'm just going to snip it. In that way, I get it to get bushier. Just there, at the top. So thank you so much for joining us on this episode. I hope you've learned something. Dahlias are the most beautiful plants and we all love dahlias because dahlias bring color. You could use those lovely flowers as cut flowers in your house, make beautiful displays and also collect your tubers and you'll have so many tubers and so many plants as the plant is maturing. So. Good luck with dahlias. Thank you so much. And don't forget to like and share. Don't forget to press the notification button and also subscribe to our channel. Invite your friends, invite your family. It's all about having fun and gardening, simple remedies on how to multiply your stock. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, DM me and also put your comments. I'm always there to answer. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Dahlia's the in thing at the moment. Thank you. Bye.